Hey guys, it's Mark from Micro Professional. Today we are talking about waking up with migraines and headaches. What do we do and, and what's going on? And so the first thing that we need to understand is our circadian rhythm. Our circadian rhythm is the 24 hour clock that our body goes by. In normal, healthy individuals, it goes a certain way. In sick individuals, that gets disrupted all of our cells get affected, all of our hormones get affected, our brain, our repair time gets affected, our body doesn't know what's going on, it thinks we're in a, a state of, of stress, we aren't safe, we're not secure, and it increases its stress hormones, it down-regulates its ability to repair and recover. So, there's a really simple way I wanna kind of explain it. So, there's two kind of main hormones that are playing here, cortisol, which is a stress hormone, but it also gives us energy. It releases sugar into the blood to get to allow our muscles to work whenever we're in some sort of situation of that requires lots of energy. And um, it's, it, it's well known as our fight or flight reaction, but it's also used to just give us energy to wake us up in the morning and it controls inflammation when it's at a steady regulated state. Then on the opposite side of the coin, there's melatonin. Now, melatonin is, it's basically like the moon to the cortisol's sun. Cortisol, it's hot, it's burning, it's a sun. Whereas melatonin, it's our, it's our calm, it's our cooling, it's our rejuvenating hormone. And whenever cortisol drops low enough, that allows melatonin to spike up. It allows melatonin to fill our body and, and get us ready for sleep and allow our sleep to repair us and rejuvenate us and allow our brain to detox while we sleep. Now, the red here is cortisol. The green is melatonin. So as you can see at midnight, we're starting here at midnight, cortisol is very low. That's the way it should be. This is in a healthy individual. It's very low. But at midnight, melatonin should be very high. And then as it gets closer to day, cortisol starts to go up and melatonin will drop off. So throughout the day, we have high cortisol. It's giving us energy. And then around six o'clock, it starts dropping. We start winding down, start winding down in the evening. And once it gets to a low point, melatonin shoots up. It prepares us for sleep. Our sleep is good. It gives us a really, really high quality of, of rest and repair. We wake up in the morning feeling rejuvenated. And then again in the morning, as the sun comes up, our cortisol spikes again and our melatonin drops off and the cycle continues. And it cycles like that over and over and over again. That's the cycle. So this controls every single system in our body. But what we have to understand is that cortisol plays a number of, of different roles. It's a stress hormone and it helps bring blood uh, sugar into the blood. So really, really important is our blood sugar. If our blood sugar is not stable throughout the night, we will not have good sleep because every time blood sugar drops off and it goes low, our body has to release cortisol and it's essentially stressing to release this cortisol and the cortisol releases sugar into the blood to help bring up blood sugar levels because it cannot our, we will go into a coma if our blood sugar is too low or too high. So it has to be very tightly regulated. So if our meal is not sustaining us throughout the night, if we aren't able to make it throughout the night with a nice steady blood sugar and it drops off, our body has to stress, it has to bring in cortisol, and then you're gonna get this these spikes, you're gonna get cortisol spikes in the middle of the day or in the middle of the night. And this is gonna wake you up, this is gonna give you a restless sleep. So you have to make sure you regulate your blood sugar, you are eating proteins and fats that digest slower, they take more time to absorb, and they give you a slow bleed of, of energy throughout the night, not just simple carbohydrates. Next thing, blue light. Blue light is a spectrum of light given off by many different light sources. So the sun gives it off. And then when the sun sets, the source of blue light is gone. Our body says, okay, the sun is gone. And it prepares, it drops off its cortisol and it prepares its melatonin. It starts bringing up the melatonin, prepares us for sleep. This is when we wind down. Now, blue light is a specific spectrum of light that triggers our body into thinking it's daytime. 
So this source of light is often given by um, fluorescent lighting and screens are the biggest and most kind of detrimental sources of it. So you really have to be careful with blue light because if you're sort of saturating your, your skin and your eyes with blue light when it's not light outside, you are changing this. You are changing this rhythm. You are making your body think, oh, it's still daytime and then it will bring up its cortisol and it will shut off its melatonin, preventing you from sleep. So if this happens too close to sleep, you don't get that wind down period and you need to wind down your cortisol. It doesn't just drop off. So it needs to be wound down to. And you want to make sure that you're avoiding sources of blue light. You can use blue blocking glasses. You can use different apps or screen covers that will block it. You want to stick to more natural sources of light and avoid blue light as much as you can because it's bad for your vision. And as many migraine headache sufferers know, fluorescent lighting is absolutely terrible for migraines and headaches. So the next one is caffeine. So caffeine is a stimulant. It is very stimulating to the body. It is the way we can kind of compare it to cortisol is that they're both very hot. They're stimulating, they're hot, they're like the sun. They increase activity, they increase the burning of the body, they increase a lot of systems, right? They drive systems. So caffeine, because it's a stimulant, it can stimulate cortisol. So whenever you have caffeine, you are stimulating your body and this is stimulating cortisol. So what happens is if you are, if it's nighttime and you have some caffeine, you will actually stimulate your cortisol to come up and then your melatonin will shut off. This will cause another huge problem because you need that wind down of the cortisol. But there's another piece because caffeine, like many migraine headache sufferers know, caffeine is also a great source for rebound. So if you are regularly having caffeine and you have a, um, what would be like a caffeine dependency, then if caffeine drops off at night, your body can actually start craving the caffeine. It will need it and it will stress, it will release cortisol and bring it up in the middle of the night to kind of compensate for that caffeine, that need for caffeine. Now you, so you really want to be careful with caffeine because like I've done another video on coffee if you want to check it out where I really go into depth on what caffeine's doing, but it messes with your hormones and it's really important to kind of understand that caffeine has a six hour half-life. So if you have 100 milligrams of caffeine at 12 noon, at six, you still have 50. And then at midnight, you still have 25. So even though you might be able to sleep, that doesn't mean the caffeine's gone. It is still circulating. So you want to be careful with that balance of not developing a dependency and not stimulating yourself when you should be winding down. The next one is parasites. So parasites have the opposite life cycle to us. Whereas we're awake in the day, we're functioning in the day, we're eating in the day. They're the opposite. They're eating at night when we're sleeping. They're eating, they're sort of rummaging through our bodies, they're looking for sources of nutrients and they're most active at night. So you wanna be careful because if you're waking up at 3, 4 a.m., 1, 2, 3, 4 a.m., it could be that parasites are being stimulated and if they are uh, damaging tissue, if they are sort of attacking the body, then the body will, again, it'll create a cortisol response because cortisol, like we were talking about before, it doesn't just help bring up energy. It doesn't just help bring sugar into the blood, but it's also very anti-inflammatory and it helps control inflammation. So you want to be careful with parasites. You want to get yourself tested, something like a GI map, a stool test, something comprehensive and a functional test, not just something you'd get at a regular doctor because it's kind of tricky to find um, parasites with the wrong testing. Then water loss, big source of kind of wake, having to wake up in the middle of the night or getting through the night and then being so dehydrated that you'll kind of uh, trigger a migraine or headache is water loss. So you want to be careful. You want to make sure that you are hydrated enough before bed, that you eat a meal early enough and then you hydrate or that you make sure you get enough hydration throughout the day. Maybe a little bit of sea salt in your water will keep you from waking, waking up while you're sleeping. 
but you want to make sure that you're hydrated while you're sleeping. And of course, you want to avoid mouth breathing while you sleep. It's much better to nose breathe because that will preserve the sort of body hydration. You won't uh, lose as much water through nose breathing. And it's much better for CO2 and oxygen and metabolism and the brain. Then the next two and the final two are sleep. So sleeping in Again, that's a big source of, of trigger for migraines and headaches. It is really, really common that if you sleep, if you're kind of on the edge of your threshold and you sleep in too long, that can kind of push you over. So you got to be careful. You want to wake up around the same time that the sun comes up because that's when your cortisol is coming up. So you want to kind of live with the natural cycles. You want to tune yourself to those cycles. Then the next one is sleep posture. You want to make sure that you're not cranking your neck, that you're sleeping in a posture that's uh, supportive for your neck, for your head, for your back, for your hips. So using pillows, using towels to support yourself and making sure that you're in a neutral position. Ideally, when you're falling asleep, according to traditional Chinese medicine, you would fall asleep on your left side, and then you would fall asleep on your right side. You'd switch over. If you're switching over, you'd switch over to your right. On your back is okay, but again, you want to make sure that you're not losing water by mouth breathing. So in the description, I'm going to link to two articles on one is waking up with tension headaches, and the other one is on hypnic headaches. Now, hypnic, hypnic headaches are the sort of medical term for a headache that wakes you up at night or a headache that you get at night. So I'll link those in the description and let me know in the comments, what triggers your migraines or headaches at night? Have you found out what it is? What is it for you? Let me know in the comments. Thanks. Hey, it's Mark from Migraine Professional. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe in the bottom left corner so that others can find this information as well. If you want to learn more about migraines than you've ever known before and how to deal with them, make sure to go to our website. Thanks.